The first thing we need to do to get ready before we use the ultrasonic is make sure that our suction is working correctly. So here I have the suction tip and I'm gonna take it in my hand, curve my fingers around it and use my thumb to push because I like a curve and not a kink. Because if you just take it and bend it quickly, it creates a kink and then the material gets stuck in the suction. So you wanna create a nice smooth curve in the suction tip. And then you're gonna take the end and you're gonna twist it like so. And then you can actually use the saliva ejector to retract as you go along. So I'm gonna show you that first. One technique that you can use is to actually retract with your suction here. So I'm gonna retract with my suction and use an extra oral fulcrum. And I'm gonna start out with a curette style and then I adapt over to the facial and use more of a probe style. And then as I go interproximal, I use more of a curette style. And every once in a while, I'll pop the suction back in there to get some of the water out. And then I'll come in curette style again, then probe style more on the facials rolling it into a curette style interproximally here. On occasion, you can let the patient close about every two to three teeth. In order to reduce moving a lot when you're using the ultrasonic, I'm gonna stay here at nine o'clock and I'm actually just going to jump right down to the buckles of quad four. I'm gonna demonstrate here as well retraction with the suction as I am using the ultrasonic. This particular tip is called the slim line. This is used at a low to medium power setting. And of course, like usual, you want the water to have a fine mist so that it doesn't get overheated. Really make sure too with your ultrasonic technique that you are using the lateral sides and not so much of the face or the back side of the instrument. And then staying here right at nine o'clock, I'm just gonna move my suction to the other side and retract once again and go right to the linguals of quad two. Here once again at nine o'clock, I have my patient tip her head up to increase my visibility. And I'm still demonstrating holding the suction because my ergonomics are steady here. Make sure that you also have a light grasp when you're using the ultrasonic because if you have strong lateral pressure against the tooth, it actually makes the ultrasonic less effective. So use a light exploratory like stroke as you're using it. Make sure when you use this instrument on a patient that you explain it a little bit first as well. So I usually say something like, I'm going to use a special tool that uses a lot of water and vibration to remove um, some of the plaque and calculus in your mouth today it makes a unique noise and it has a lot of water but it's the best instrument for your care so you just raise your hand if you have any discomfort at all for the linguals of quad three i need to retract the tongue with my mirror so now i'm going to demonstrate placing the saliva ejector in the patient's cheek to catch the water while i instrument you want to avoid placing the suction right directly onto the cheek tissue because it can cause trauma. So you want to aim it a little bit more so that it's towards the lingual of the tooth surface. More hanging down into the throat area almost, but not so far down that you're going to gag the patient. It's really important to learn how to fill calculus with your ultrasonic tip. So every so often you can deactivate and use an exploratory like stroke to evaluate your work. Know as well that your technique for periodontal therapy will be slightly different than your technique on a profi patient, which is what I'm doing here for you today. I'm now going to change clock positions to sit at about 11 o'clock to do all of my posterior surfaces away. One of the main points that I want to make here is that scaling with a sequence will make you more efficient. If you're scaling by arch, meaning all the way from 1 to 16 on the buckle and then back from 16 to 1 on the lingual, you're really wasting a lot of time and you really have to move your clock positions a lot and your suction a lot, which wastes time as well. And it's also a lot harder on your body. So make sure you get a sequence and stick to that and make it effective for you. I'm always really cautious of areas that have recession because I don't want to cause pain to my patients when I'm using the ultrasonic. And a lot of times this tool can cause a lot of sensitivity. So I'm always really cautious around recessed areas. We we'll also want to avoid areas that are demineralized or maybe an area that has an open lesion on it. 
When you're dealing with sensitive patients, you can also warm the water. So sometimes I'll take my water bottle off and I'll put warm water in it. And that's really nice for those patients who have a lot of sensitivity to the cold. And if it is tender to the patient, consider just skipping that area with the ultrasonic and hand instrumenting it instead. Or consider getting it numb if you do need to get into the area to remove the calculus. If ever you see an area that is bleeding when you're using the ultrasonic, feel free to stay there a little bit longer and flush it out with the water and the cavitation also helps destroy the bacteria in the area. So this is a really good tool for those areas of gingivitis. When you're working with indirect vision and you have the ultrasonic, it usually is creating a lot of splatter on your mirror. So the way to prevent this is actually you wanna spray your mirror down with your ultrasonic tip. What this does is it creates a film of water over the top of your mirror so that it absorbs any splatter that gets on the mirror and you'll be able to see better. If you have a patient that's having a hard time with all of the water that comes through the ultrasonic, you can sit them up a little bit to help the water not flow so much into the throat. Or, especially on my geriatric patients, I even at times have to stand to prevent the pooling in the back of the throat so that the suction can catch it a little bit easier. So now I'm gonna move up actually to 12 o'clock and I'm gonna do all my away and all of my toward surfaces on my anterior teeth. Now you can do this with the ultrasonic because there is no cutting edge. One of my personal philosophies with the ultrasonic is that if it's not activated, you're not removing calculus and it's not doing its job. So feel free to keep the pedal to the metal, as I like to say, and do four or five teeth at a time before you stop and give the patient a break. Um, as long as you keep the power at a level that is not too high, um, it won't get too hot, as long as your water is flowing as well, then your patient is gonna be just fine. So to prevent the water from going up the patient's nose, you can actually place the suction with your hand blocking the area like I'm showing here. Or sometimes I'll even hang the suction on the cheek and retract the lip with a paper towel that will kind of cover the face as well. We have a tendency with the lower anteriors to see all the teeth as one tooth. We get really excited as hygienists once we've removed one little piece of calculus. We just want to jump right over into the next big piece. But I want to encourage you to stay there until that piece is gone. And then you're not having to do a lot of back and forth. Oh, I missed that. I need to go back again. I'm going to go back again. Just get it in the moment when you're there to be more effective and efficient over time. There is also a lot of talk about not using the ultrasonic on newly erupted teeth for a few years, but on occasion you may end up needing that. It might be more beneficial to the patient. And so if I have that instance happen, I'll turn it at a very low setting and just use it to remove a lot of the biofilm and plaque and irrigate out the gums, even if it is a newly erupted tooth. It's very important to regularly check the length of your ultrasonic tip because over time the instrument actually does shorten as you use it, which reduces the efficiency of the instrument. So when you get the instrument tip, generally the instrument company will send you a guide that will allow you to check and make sure that your tip is long enough and that you're being effective with it. When you're done with the ultrasonic, then you can go ahead and touch up any areas with your hand instruments that you need.